What's up guys? So all of those shots that you just saw were shot with the Sony ZV-1. I'm gonna show you exactly how I set this camera up to make it a cinematic powerhouse. With that being said, there's a couple of things that I wanna mention. Straight out of box, it's a great camera, but it definitely needs some customization to take it to the next level. Also, when you're out in the field, you don't wanna be fumbling around through the menus to try to get a certain setting that you're looking for. So I'm gonna show you exactly which custom buttons I used and what settings I set inside of them so that I have easy access to them for seamless shooting. If you've already messed around with some of your customization and you wanna get it back to its factory base so that you can follow along, Go ahead and go to your menu, go to tab five, page six, and just do a setting reset and then hit initialize. That'll take your camera back to its factory settings. So two of the buttons that I find myself using the most are the mode button and the function button. Let's go ahead and click on mode and then let's change it to movie. And we're gonna set our exposures to manual because the auto exposure out of any camera is usually not as good as if you manually expose it yourself. So now we're gonna go in the menu settings from left to right. I'm gonna go pretty quick. There's a lot of settings in here that don't apply to movie or video or any of the settings that I'm showing you, so I'm just gonna skip over them. Just make sure as I go through, you're following along, and if um, I go too fast, just pause the video and look to see what the settings are. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to menu. We're gonna go to page one, tab one. The first thing that I did was turn the aspect ratio to 16 by nine. We go over, skip this stuff. This is photography. Shooting mode is manual exposure, good. We already set that up. This is tab one, page four. This is your memory. We're gonna come back to this uh, once we get into the customization side. Now we're at tab one, page five, focus modes. Uh, continuous autofocus, focus area wide. There's different focus areas, but for the most part, I use wide because it really helps me dial in the focus that I'm looking for without having the camera decide for me. Um, face, eye, autofocus set. I have, make sure that you copy all of these things and that your subject detection is human. Pre-auto focus on, focus frame color white, auto focus area, auto clear off. Tab one, page seven. We're gonna set a custom button for the ISO, so don't worry about that, but I set mine to 125 at the base. It always should be as low as it can go so you can get the highest quality picture. Uh, ND filters off, we also have a custom button for that so that when we're outside, we can just turn it on really quick. Uh, metering mode to multi, face priority and multi-metering on. All right, this is photography stuff. White balance, I have it set to auto. If we get into a situation where we're seeing like miscoloring or a lot of greens or purplish type tinting, then we're gonna go into the white balance and we'll fix it from there. I'll show you guys on a different video how to custom white balance your cameras. Priority set and auto white balance standard. So for the Dro Auto HDR and the creative style, leave it to D-Range Optimizer and Standard. It's gonna give you the most realistic look and skin tones on your subjects. I like to use picture profiles, but when I'm not using a picture profile, this is the best uh, settings to have it in. Picture profile, we're gonna leave it off for now. Soft skin effect, I have it turned to on and I have it turned to mid. It also kind of softens up that skin. Focus magnifier times two seconds. Peaking setting, you can turn it on if you want. I leave mine off. Maybe in the future I'll use it more, but for now I just, I just leave it off. We're gonna leave the product showcase set off and the registration faces priority to on. All right, so now we're on the exposure mode. So this is one of the most important menu settings. We're gonna leave it on manual exposure. And for now, we're just going to leave it to um, HD 24 frames per second. So if you wanna to go to 4K, you go ahead and turn this to 4K like that, and then you can come and choose which frame rate you want between 24 and 30. A disclaimer is that a lot of computers cannot handle 4K footage, so make sure that your computer can handle it before you continue to shoot and you come home with a bunch of footage that's in 4K and then your computer crashes. The HFR settings are basically like the slow motion settings, the lower the frame rate, the better to keep that high quality. If you go to 960, the frame rates really just drop off. So I usually, I just keep it to 240 and uh, that way I have super slow-mo at my fingertips ready to go if I need it. We're gonna keep it everything else just the way it is. Okay, so now we're at the um, autofocus drive speed. I leave the autofocus drive speed to normal and the autofocus tracking sensor to standard. If I put that at responsive, a lot of times you'll get that pulsating in and out where the camera is trying to focus on something and it can't decide what it wants to focus on. And it really just, just makes it look like it's amateur footage. So leave it on standard. Okay, audio record level. You wanna keep your audio levels between negative 12 and negative six uh, without peaking. So the best thing to do is just to video record, test your subject out, 
or if you, it's you, go back, listen to it, make sure that you're in that negative 12 to negative six range. So I have mine set to 26 when I don't have any external mics on there. If I was to put a shotgun mic on, I'd probably drop this down to like 10 and then a lav mic maybe down to like five. Um, every voice is different, every environment is different, so you have to just record your subject talking and then go and listen to it to make sure that you're not peaking or your audio is not loud enough. So for now, we're just gonna set that to 26. Audio level display on, wind noise reduction off, steady shot active. Okay, so there's two different options for the steady shot, which is basically image stabilization. There's the active and the standard. The standard is okay, the active is great. The active punches in pretty far right into your face. So I leave it on standard if I'm just shooting myself like in a vlog type style video. If I'm shooting a subject, I'll turn it to active so I can really get the most out of my image stabilization. We're also gonna customize that button too so you'll be able to switch back and forth without having to go through this whole menu setting. Marker display off, record lamp on, that's this to let you know that you're sh actually recording, which is nice because there's been a lot of times where I thought I was recording and then I go to turn it off and realize that I'm not. Movie with shutter off, shutter type auto, release without cord, enable, steady shot on. Zoom speed is fast. If you choose normal, it's pretty slow. So keep it at fast. All right, display button. All I wanna see when I push on the display button right here is the histogram, the level, and also the full display. So that's the way that I have it set up. Zebra settings, we're gonna leave that off for now. Grid lines, we're gonna leave it off. Exposure set guide off, auto review off. Okay, custom keys. Since we are not photographers here and we are only filmmakers, we use the custom key for the little video sign. So we click on that and you have five different options from what you can choose from. Um, this is how I have it all set up and I'll show you exactly what it looks like once we get to the main display. But if you wanna copy that down, I found that this is the most easiest, simplistic way to get to the most important controls right at your fingertips. Function of touch operation, touch tracking, movie button always, audio signals on. We're gonna skip over the network settings. This is like to connect to your smartphone or to a gimbal or the little Bluetooth vlog handle that they sell. Um, we're also gonna skip over playback for now and we're gonna go straight to the setup one. Go down to delete, confirm, cancel first. Auto monitor does not turn off. Power off with monitor, power off. Touch operation on. All right guys, so now that we're done with the menu settings, I'm gonna show you the custom buttons and how they're set up and what they do so that you can have them at your fingertips when you need them. The bottom right hand corner, which is C2, I have, we have that set to autofocus, manual focus, toggle, so that it's really simple and easy to click between when you're autofocused and when you're on manual focus. I find that a lot of times I'm trying to get focused on something, the camera thinks I'm trying to focus on something else, I'll quickly just press the manual focus button, now I'm set to manual focus and I know that the camera's not gonna try to refocus itself. When you're in this manual focus mode, you can come up here to C1, which we set to focus standard, you press it, and now it gives you the ability to be able to focus with the scroll wheel. It's basically like the same thing as if you had like a rack on your, on your lens. Since we don't have a rack on our lens, we're just gonna do it this way on this camera. The second most used button is the ISO button. So we have that set up to the right side of the scroll wheel, you press it down, and now we have easy access to the ISO. And you use the scroll wheel to turn that up and down. The lower the ISO, the better. I would never take the ISO on this camera probably past like 2500 because then the footage starts to fall apart and you get a lot of noise. The bottom of the scroll wheel changes between the aperture and the shutter speed. If you have like 24 frames per second, you wanna put your shutter speed to 1 50th. At least you wanna start with that. If you want a more descriptive detail on these three functions, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, go ahead and click on this video right here and I go through why you need those and how to use them. The left side of the scroll wheel is gonna be our audio level. I find a lot of times, like if I'm shooting different people or different environments, I'll need to quickly change the audio record levels. Again, you wanna be between negative 12 and negative six, but now we have easy access to that. The top of the scroll wheel is your displays like we talked about. This is what shows you your histogram quickly. It also shows you your balance, how balanced the camera is. So I made this middle button right here, my ND filter. If you're ever shooting outside, you're gonna want quick access to that. The ND filter really helps 
by almost like putting sunglasses on your camera so that you can keep those base settings and you don't have to crank your shutter speed way up or your aperture. Okay, so now that we have that taken care of, I wanna set up two different memories that we have in this camera. The first one is like 24 frames per second 4K. And that's for when you're shooting somebody talking or maybe you're shooting yourself vlogging. The second memory that I wanna set up is B-roll and slow motion. So you can quickly toggle between the two. If you're out and you're shooting somebody in 24 frames per second and you wanna to quickly toggle over to your slow motion B-roll, we have a quick memory set up for that as well. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So the first one we're gonna set up is the 24 frames per second because that one is probably the most used one. Just remember, if you're shooting in 24 frames per second, you won't be able to slow any of that down in post, but it does have the best look to it. So we go to page two, tab one. We're gonna go down to XAVCS 4K. Make sure that's in 4K. We're gonna set the record setting to 24P, 100 megabytes per second. Then we're gonna press menu. We're gonna double our shutter speed to match that frame rate so it's all set, ready to go once we toggle over to it. Down display button, we're gonna turn this shutter speed down to 1 50th. We're gonna turn the f-stop as low as it can go so we can get that nice blurry background. Then we're gonna go back to menu. Then we're gonna go over to page one, tab four. Click on memory. We set our memory to number one, and now it's registered. So now our first memory is set to 24 frames per second in 4K with the shutter speed of one over 50 and the aperture as low as it can go. Okay, so now that we're done setting up our 24 frames per second on memory one, we're gonna set memory two to 120 frames per second, which can be used for slow motion. So we're gonna go back to tab two, page one. We're going to go to file format, set it to XAVCSHD, and then we're gonna change that to 120p 100m. Now we're gonna to go to our main display and we're gonna change the shutter speed to one over 250 because we wanna double our shutter speed, whatever our frame rate is. Then we're gonna make sure our aperture is as low as it can go. We're also gonna make sure that our ISO is as low as it can go. Now we're gonna go back to menu, go up to, go up to page one, tab four, Memory set, go to number two, hit the middle button, now you're registered. The way that you get to these memories when you're out in the field, rather than having to go through the menus to try to find them, is you click on the mode button like we first talked about, you scroll up to MR or memory recall, click on it, and now you can go in between one and two. When you click on either of these, it takes you to, there's that setting and it's all set up with the shutter speed all set, the aperture and everything else. So we don't have that many custom buttons on the outside of the camera to get to things fast, but there's a function button, FN, that you can quickly toggle between whatever preferences you want. Like for example, I also want steady shot um, quickly available where I can toggle between active and standard. Active if I'm shooting a subject, standard if I'm shooting myself because when you're in active, it punches in a little bit, but the stabilization is really good. Another thing that I did was set the auto white balance inside this menu. That way, if I'm having trouble with my white balance or the tone in the picture, I can quickly come here and set a custom white balance profile for my picture. Another thing that I put inside the function menu is that super slow-mo 240 frames per second because you never know when you might need that and I don't wanna have to go find it in the menu settings where it is and engage it. So I'm gonna show you now how to go to your function menu so you can customize it to however you want it. Uh, first, you're gonna go to menu you're gonna to go to tab two, page eight. You're gonna go down to function menu set. The first row is for pictures. The bottom row is for video. And you can set this however you want. You can copy mine if you want, whatever you find you're needing while you're out in the field shooting. Okay guys, the final thing that I wanna to talk to you about is picture profiles. I shot a lot of the video that you saw in S-Log2. Some of it I shot straight out of camera. I find that with S-Log2, you have more room to color grade it in post. A lot of people don't really wanna take that time to color grade their footage in post. So if you don't wanna do that, just leave the settings the way they are and you will have a really good picture out of this camera. 
If you wanna get the most dynamic range out of this camera, then you're really gonna to have to use picture profiles. If you want, I can make a video on how to shoot S-Log2 with this camera and then not only how to expose for it, but also how to edit it in Final Cut Pro. All right guys, so that's just how I set up this camera to get those cinematic shots, but everybody's different and you might have a preference on maybe putting a different setting in a different custom button or making a different setting accessible rather than what I did. But at least this gives you a good base and a good start on how to customize your buttons how to get all of your exposure settings squared away so that you're in control of the camera, and most of all, so you can go out there and start creating. As always, guys, thanks for watching this video. If it helped you, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Joe with Potter Made, and let's grow as we go.